Hey everyone, this is Pamela Coey and this is going to be a time-lapse video uh, for the most part and here I'm just showing you what I got started with. It's an acrylic painting with a limited palette, yellow, orange, red, purple, black, and white. And there was my table with my mark making tools and I'm working here on Strathmore mixed media paint paper. It's uh, 40 by 80 so there are two sheets here that are just taped. Uh, tape to the wall. You can't really see the seam in the middle because there's tape over that as well. And uh, here I'm just beginning with Crepa as pencil. You know, I've got a Sakura solid marker in black, which I really like, and um, number two pencils, art graph, you know, any, anything really. My favorite favorites. Uh, I always just grab them and uh, like to play around in the very beginning. It just, you know, it kind of energizes the body and uh, I think put some energy in those lower layers and um, here I'm definitely using my hands. I've got my gloves on and there's something really satisfying that I've discovered about just using my hands and you know we use brushes and squeegee tools and silicone tools and all kinds of things but now and then you know it's really fun just to get your your hands literally dirty. Um, but that's not to say that I don't also use and, and enjoy using brushes. Here's a really nice long handled brush and uh, that's really an expressive tool. I'm just putting on black acrylic here and um, you know really this is the playful stage. It's um, it's so fun just to I think when I start this way it uh, given that you know you, it's a very energetic start no doubt um, but it's just fun because one thing leads to another and you get to move around you get to walk around when it's on the wall like this um, and it allows you to step back a lot. Uh, so anyways, I'm just um, applying the paint. And obviously there's this thing of, you know, you put it on and sometimes you cover things up. Here I'm putting Art Graph, which is water soluble, right into the wet paint. And I just did that and then I took an eraser and here I'm going back into the wet paint as well. So erasers work well. Here comes the long handled brush again. This is where I start to put some color in. There's a little bit of red there. And you know I, yeah, so this is where I start to add color. And again I'm using Nova Color. Nova Color, uh, Nova Colors is a company that makes a lot of really nice acrylics. And um, there's my palette. It's, it's the same wet palette that I've shown you on another video. It's got the blue paper towels, shop towels that have been soaked. There's tracing paper on the top of that. It's very lightweight on the cafeteria tray. And um, the tracing paper actually is about the same size as the cafeteria tray. And as I've mentioned uh, before, and also in the description below this video, you'll find my website, artandsuccess.com where you can simply click on resources at that website and find out where uh, to easily find these cafeteria trays and the matching size tracing paper. I also have a link to Nova Color and all my favorite mark making tools. It's just kind of always there. I keep adding to it. <laughs> so here I'm just, I switched to a bigger brush. I actually recently found this brush while I was visiting my son in Portland. Went to this amazing art store I can't remember what it was called. I think it was called Columbia Paints um, or Columbia Art Store. And they just, these were really high quality brushes. Long handles, nice wide bristles. So I like to use, you know, different sizes of brushes. And I really wish I could paint this fast, but <laughs> obviously I do not paint this fast. This is called time lapse. This is when you speed up the video. And you, if there was any sound, I'd have to just take it off because otherwise it, it would just be really annoying because I'd sound like a chipmunk. So I decided to just like kind of narrate what I'm doing here instead of, um, you know, uh, playing it in real time because it would just, you would fall asleep. These things don't really happen this quickly. I had to do a lot of editing just to take it all the, the quiet times when I'm just looking at the painting and stepping back and... And I do give myself lots of room to step back. I think that's pretty important. It's the advantage of having it on the wall or on the floor versus like on a table. It's really hard to step back if something's on a table. 
notice that even though I do have purple as part of my palette, it's I'm not using the full strength, highly saturated purple. If it shows at all, it's been really grayed down and I wanted to have, you know, two warms and a cool. And um, probably in another painting, I'm gonna do two cools and a warm. It doesn't really matter what the colors are. Um, just, it's good to have some cool and some warm. It's really nice to have opaque and transparent, but you know, any paint can really be made into a transparent, so I don't really worry too much about that. Here I'm taking the bottle of gray. I put a bead of paint up there, and then it was really thick and wasn't moving, so then I put some uh, airbrush medium right on top of the gray bead, and then I'm taking this long brush and pulling that paint down. It just didn't drip the way I wanted it to. It's such a meditative process, and it's so much fun just to keep stepping back and evaluating what the next move will be. Because I'm using my hand so much in this painting, it does have a little bit of a different mood. It feels looser, it feels more free, and that felt good. I haven't you know, really painted like this before. It's the first time I really used my, my hand to this extent, and uh, I you know, used it before in other paintings, but this one largely, that's kind of like my main uh, tool here. So. Yeah, the effect is a little bit different, and I'm not, you know, not really, not really thinking about anything except trying to get the paint on there, trying to move it around, uh, trying to make interesting marks and shapes. And as far as value goes, I'm not really, um, I mean, I'm aware of what's happening, and when I step back, I'm squinting and I'm trying to figure out, you know, where is my eye going first, and what are the shapes that, that I see first? Like what are the predominant shapes and where are they? Um, are they interesting? Are they too bold? Do they need to be kind of, you know, um, sent back a little bit by either putting marks over them or perhaps even obliterating it? Um, this is kind of everything happening at one time. Like I, I do teach in my online course that, you know, the first thing I do is I play. Well, there's plenty of play here. Um, the play then turns into the next phase, which is explore, where I'm, you know, stepping back, I'm trying new things. Um, pretty soon you'll see me bringing out some paper where I do some monoprint. And every time that I make another mark and push this painting forward, things are either disappearing or they're reappearing or whatever's happening. But um, the, the whole adventure, the whole journey of this painting is in, intentionally going to be a more gestural painting. It's on paper number one, and I, I think when you work on paper, sometimes you feel like it's less precious, and that encourages you to be a little bit more uh, free and loose than you might be on wood. And also, I'm very limited in terms of, say, I can't gouge into the paper, I can't use uh, my all and drag it into the surface of the paper so in that point I'm a little bit limited tool wise but then this this is going to be mounted on to panel and then I'm going to decide um, after refining it some more whether I want to uh, introduce some cold wax medium and oils on the top I may or may not do that I think what I need to do is first mount it on panel and then um, kind of live with it for a while because I actually like how this painting turned out. Um, it's definitely looser and freer, but with a little bit of refinement, once it gets mounted, I can foresee probably just leaving it pretty much the way it is. And I'm fine with 
exploring kind of extremes of what I enjoy. I don't feel like every single painting I do has to end up being, you know, really uh, more subtle and quiet. I like to have a range because emotionally I am also that way. You know, I have the quiet, but I also have the loud um, in my life. And so I think it's okay to have that range expressed within my work. And I'm not trying to go for just like one consistent thing. Um, I'm really trying to explore all that I really feel and give myself permission just to do that right now. Here I'm using that long handled brush for a little bit more refinement, uh, a little bit more refined shapes. And then here's a close up because it's really hard at the angle that I was uh, videotaping to really see any amount of detail. Um, but you can see that there is some, some paint that's more patterned, um, some paint is thick, some is thin, some of it was dripping, and here's the dry mark making and then areas where I use my hand, my fingers, they, you know, it, it's just really a lot of different types of textures and surfaces that you get when you kind of mix up your tools like that. And it's always a good time in my process to bring back mark making tools. It, it just doesn't even matter whether it's the beginning, the middle, or the end. It's kind of my comfort zone. Uh, whenever I feel like something needs, it's, it's too static, I'll, I'll introduce line. Or if I just feel like, uh, you know, an area needs more attention, I might introduce some line. It doesn't mean it's all gonna stay there. Sometimes I'll obliterate it. And standing back, it's pretty easy to see that it's largely a curvilinear um, and, and amorphous shaped painting. So as I move on here, and I'm, I'm starting to actually do a little bit of refining, even though you know I wouldn't say that it's, um, it's not done, but I wouldn't say that it's, um, for this particular painting, I'm gonna let it actually live like this for a pretty long time. So I don't think it's that far from being done, however, you know, like what I'm doing right there. I was trying to obliterate this black line that was smack dab in the middle of the painting. I remember first trying like a crepaz and that wasn't doing enough. And then I went and got some titanium white paint. And then once I um, tried to diminish the impact of that dark line going across, you know, I'm trying to make that middle section a little bit more interesting. It's right in the middle of the painting. And, you know, there's something about when I work, I'm always trying to kind of consciously avoid middle and then in this painting I ended up with something that was pretty distracting right in the middle so I tried to obliterate that and then there I was just you know trying to refine by adding a few hard edges that were rectilinear that's why I used the edge of the paper and the newsprint because I have a lot of curvilinear so what I don't have is anything that's really rectilinear I'm trying to be careful with the red. I love red and I'm trying to just allow as much um, as I need, or I should say the, the most minimal amount I need to move the eye around the painting. It's so potent, it's so uh, bright and saturated the way I'm using it here. And, and there are areas where I've dulled it like right there, but I'm still trying to gauge you know how much red I have left in this final painting and here I put the monoprint with the gray just by squirting some paint onto the brown paper and I'm you could say I'm monoprinting it but then when I stood back it's like oh that's nice because it's like the same size and the same shape as that shape below it <laughs> and that was 
something I didn't even realize I was doing. So then uh, later on you'll see where I try to obliterate some of that, that upper gray rectangle. I don't think I've noticed it yet, um, but I will notice it pretty soon and that's when I start to change that shape. And here I'm trying to accent, uh, accentuate some of the patterny dots that were down there. I tried a few different things. Some weren't dark enough and then I had to go get a different color. I think I'm using mostly just cray paws there. This was just so much fun to do this painting. It just felt like, you know, I could just do this every single day and never get tired of just, I don't know, it's very therapeutic, it's kind of meditative, and, and I'm also getting my exercise. <laughs> so here's where I start to obliterate this uh, rectangular shape. I'm trying to offset the feel of it, you know, so it doesn't feel like the very same shape on, right, on, right above the very same shape. So I actually just put water over the paint and I lifted, tried to lift some of that, tried to obliterate the corner, more obliterating with water and then wiping. It hadn't dried yet, so I, I could do that. And then here I'm, I'm kind of restating. So when you restate, you know, um, you can put something back, but it's not put back in the very same way. upper left hand corner I just noticed that there was a little bit too much red and it was going all the way along the edge and and so I'm obliterating some of the red and making it a lighter value constantly squinting to see what is the you know approximate distribution of value in the painting is it kind of clear what's happening here the darks are kind of the um, one of the least prominent values so it's very clear what the black is doing and then are the midtones hanging together to um, provide some sense of quiet and combining to make bigger, larger shapes, even though there could be color differences. And then, you know, how much pure white do I have? I spent quite a bit of time trying to obliterate, um, or I should say cover up the white of the paper because the white of the paper is very, it's just like, you know, gessoed panel. How much of that white gesso or how much of that white do you, do you really want in your painting? Because white is very potent. And it's really, it's almost like a flashlight. So I did try to, even if it's just a, just barely off white or a light valued gray, I tried to obliterate some of the white, quite a bit of the white. So there could be a lot of high key areas, but not just plain old white, white paper. And here I'm working again into that sort of middle section to introduce things that are they're small things, but when you come up close, they kind of matter because it means that there's something going on there in the middle of the painting. It's not just white or it's not just something super calm and with nothing going on. And there's a little bit more of my attempt to make some rectilinear forms, which once it's mounted on panel, I will be doing more of that kind of thing. That's the kind of refinement that I think I can do a little bit more easily once it's mounted on panel. Here I was um, just trying to put in some very drippy paint and I had added some airbrush medium to the paint and I kept going over that area to get the, the amount of dripping that I really wanted. So there will be a close-up pretty soon where you can see that. And there is tape all the way around the perimeter and down the middle of the painting because this is two sheets of paper. So when I mount it, I can either mount it on one uh, 40 by 80 inch board or I could make it into a diptych of two 40 by 40s, but that's not something I know yet. Uh, I think I'll probably do a diptych. I like the idea of the two panels hanging side by side with just a little gap in between. It's also a little bit easier than if you have to ship it somewhere. So here I'm pulling off the tape 
And as I'm pulling it off, I've got these jumbo thumb tacks that I'm using a rubber mallet to, or not a rubber mallet, but a hammer to um, pound the tacks into the wall to hold the paper in place as I peel the tape off. And there's the tape coming off of the middle. It just feels so good to peel that um, very messy tape off. <laughs> you can actually see the painting so much better. So thank you very much for watching the video. I hope you enjoy it. And um, I really appreciate you visiting my channel and I always appreciate your comments. So um, I hope you're subscribed. That way you always get a notification when I post a new video. And um, here is uh, close-ups, the drippiness. And I had added the airbrush medium to that area, um, to the paint before I put it on. That's how it dripped. Um, here's a large area where I use my hands and a little bit of calligraphy. So thanks again, everybody. It's always fun to share with you. I appreciate your comments. Bye now.